Captains of Industry, brought to you by Airtel. Now, in Kenya alone, the mobile phone market is expected to grow in the region of 42%. And for this reason, many international investors see ICT as the next growth frontier. One of those is uh, Airtel that has entered 16 African countries, made Kenya their African headquarters. And uh, with acquisitions in all of these countries, they are set to really stir up things and reinvigorate the market. Our captain of industry tonight is none other than Manoj Kohli, the international CEO for Airtel and the joint managing director for Barty. Airtel, thanks again for being with us. Now it's projected that by the year 2015, the mobile broadband subscriptions in Africa will have risen from 12 million to 260 million. So that's an exponential growth. You talk about every African having a handset and every young African having access to the internet. Despite these projections, internet penetration is still very, very low, somewhere in the region of 8%. And not only is it cost, not only is it depths of broadband, but it's also because of education and skills issues. How are you planning to work around that, be part of the solution? No, I think there are three, three strategies here which we are deploying. First is that internet should enter all schools. So we are working with government that we will place uh, internet in every school along with government. I think that's most important, which means our 3G services will be utilizable in every school, kids will be able to browse on the internet, etc. Yeah. They'll get used to it, play around with it, etc. Second is affordability. Mm. Internet access has to be affordable. Mm. Very important, because if it's not affordable, only rich people can use yeah. it. And that's not the objective. Internet is a mass commodity. It has to be used by everyone, like voice. And third and most important is network coverage and network quality. Yeah. We need to have internet available in all big towns, small towns, yeah. highways, as you drive around, you need to use internet. So we need to have 3G network across this mm -hmm. continent. So our strategy for 2G and 3G is a concurrent strategy. Mm -hmm. So it's a voice and internet strategy. Because internet is as important as voice. Yeah. So we will also give very exciting content. For example, we recently signed with Manchester United. So we'll give a lot of football content, a lot right. of music, a lot of other content which Africans will love. Right. So we'll give content which they will love. The more right. content they utilize, more internet they will utilize. It's reported that as part of sort of product development and strategy, you're also going to be doing things like subsidizing laptops in order to make the rolling out of internet services uh, easier. It kind of says to me, you're going to be bleeding cash before you see a profit. Does that We don't, you? as a policy, we don't subsidize. Right. We don't subsidize handsets. We don't subsidize laptops. That's one of the very important policies of Bharti Airtel. Yeah. You know, if you, if you give affordable tariffs, you can't subsidize handsets. In Western world, yeah. they give very high tariffs yeah. and they subsidize handsets. But we believe as a policy that handset is not our business. It's business of Blackberry and Nokia <laughs> and Apple and many, many other brands. Yeah. If they have to subsidize, they should subsidize. Yeah. We do only bundling, a very attractive bundling, but we never subsidize. So it will not have any impact on our okay. financials. Now, as CEO of Airtel International, I mean, ultimately your job is to drive the vision and to synergize the goals across Africa and internationally with the business you've built up in India. Are you overwhelmed by the task at hand? No, we are, we are extremely excited. We are really thrilled to be in Africa. I've got, uh, of course, we have got 6,500 employees here, African employees. We've also brought in a small team from India of 40, 50 people. And we really are here looking at the transformation of this continent. Mm. We are not overwhelmed. We just feel that we need to have smarter logistics. Yeah. We need to have smarter automation which is important for us right. because if the logistics is tough, then automation has to be better. Obviously, the focus now is on the emerging markets and Africa as part of the emerging market space. And we're starting to see new interesting changes in the global financial architecture in that African business is growing because investments are flowing in from India and China. Trade between Africa and the world is growing because 30% of it is with BRIC countries. But despite all these successes is the politics and the politics of India and China being seen as neo-colonizers of Africa. How do you deal with those perceptions? 
I, I really can't say about anything about China because uh, I can I can talk about India. India India is the largest democracy in the world, 1.2 billion people, throbbing democracy. Yeah. Uh, we have now started a globalization of Indian companies. Tata's, for example, one Indian brand which is important. Many other Indian brands are going global. Not only in Africa, but Latin America, Europe, US, Russia, Japan, Southeast Asia. We as Bharti, we are very clear. We are coming to transform Africa, help Africans build an African company. So there is, there is, that is the intention, that is the vision. Uh, we really feel that, and, 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 and this is more a private sector initiative vis-a-vis -vis China where there is more governmental initiative. Yeah. Here in India, it is led by more entrepreneurs, more private sector companies like Bharti Airtel with no government support. So, so I don't think these fears have any basis. And we are here to help, support, make Africans right. connected to the world, right. make Africans more efficient, more productive, mm -hmm help them with internet, voice and many, many other new services. Make this phone as a mobile internet, make this phone as a mobile ATM for e-commerce purposes, help live a better standard of living. That's our objective. As an outsider looking in, and by now I'm sure you're, you're an African, but your perceptions on the evolution of Africa, you keep on talking about the need to connect Africa to the world, but there's so many uh, dichotomies on the African continent, exorbitant wealth in the midst of abject poverty, um, high skills in the upper echelons in the midst of uh, poor education, uh, patriarchy, men and women and how they contribute to the economy. Now some would say that's a, an emerging market mm. problem, but when you look at the evolution of Asia right now, it seems as though Africa is still way, way behind. I don't think it's a way, way behind. I, I think uh, we have seen this evolution in India and once it takes off, it goes very fast. It is three in one in a, uh, evolution, polit political, and I think that is happening in Africa. A lot of countries are getting more and more democratic, more and more elections are happening. Second, social societies are changing. Uh, if you go back 50 years, 100 years, rich people could use all the important things like phones, etc. Yeah. Poor people could not use it. Yeah. Now poor people can use, there's a massification of phones, massification of many products and other services. So society is changing. Mm -hmm. And finally, the, the, the e economies. Economies are growing by 5%, 7%, 8%, which is fantastic news. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, once this change is catalyzed and telecom catalyzes this change, mm -hmm. Telecom is at the lead of this change. In India, India was growing at a Hindu rate of 4%. Right. When telecom and IT came in, because these two are catalyst sectors, India's growth rate went up to 8 to 9% and now we are close to 10% growth. Right. So telecom and IT will change Africa too. Now your accomplishments have been celebrated the world over and in Asia you've been named telecom. Uh, man of the year, telecom person of the year. What's, what philosophy guides the work that you do? And is that going to change in any way because you're in a different environment in Africa? No, our philosophy of our company is very, very clear. We want to really transform societies. We want to make a big impact in the society. That's, that's our purpose. Of course, at the end of the day, we want to be financially healthy. Mm -hmm. But while being financially healthy, we can transform societies. Mm -hmm. And our company is, is doing it in India, day after day, not being an urban company, being a rural company. We have transformed villages, villages which are 500 population, 1000 population. Mm -hmm. Same thing we want to do in Africa. Mm -hmm. And we want to do it with humility. Mm -hmm. We want to do it with touch, personal touch right. to the real masses of Africa. So me, my senior colleagues, we really travel across the markets, right. really go to rural. I was in the north, north villages of Nigeria on the border of Niger right. and Nigeria, meeting rural people, right. understanding their needs, how I can help, how I can bring, right. we can bring goodness to them, goodness of telecom, goodness of m-commerce, goodness of internet. Right. And I think these changes are marvelous changes for them. Yeah. They, will, they will connect with the world much faster than 
in the next year or two right. than they did in the last hundred years. You've been very diplomatic. I refer to your personal accomplishments and <laughs> your personal philosophy because ultimately you are the captain at the end of the ship. Okay. I, I, I come from a middle class family in India, family which focuses a lot on basic values mm -hmm. of hard work, honesty, yeah. cost consciousness and humility. These are the four or five values we get from our parents in India. Yeah. Middle class family, go and do your best, be humble, serve the people, serve the masses, transform them, help them change. So my personal philosophy and my company's philosophy, <laughs> fortunately, is right. congruent. Mm -hmm. Is congruent, goes hand in hand. Yeah. And that's why one is happy working and building Airtel brand in Africa. Big issues in Africa political and corporate is mentorship and succession. I mean obviously you're here to build this company, build this brand, but there's got to be a time where you hand over the reins to indigenous Africans possibly to take this African company forward. How important is that to you right now? Very important. You hit the nail. Uh, we are building African leadership pipeline, not only for Africa, but also for India. We have just decided to take six Africans back to India who will, who will get permanent positions, understand the uh, dynamics of Indian market, etc., etc. In Africa, we are building the best capabilities and skills of each country. For example, let's take Malawi. Why shouldn't the best finance team of Malawi, finance professionals of Malawi work with us? Mm. Best marketing professionals, be best supply chain professionals, be best technical people, engineers work with us. We develop them, we train them, not only directly, but also through our partners like Ericsson, Nokia, IBM, send them to India for more uh, extensive training of scale because India has 150 million customers, so huge scale training. We are really committed to build skills here. Yeah. And I am at the senior level, personally mentoring, coaching senior leaders of Africa, mm -hmm. so that actually the transition or the succession in Airtel becomes so smooth. So that's our... How would you like to be remembered? I think I, I remembered as a person who came to Africa, transformed the society, touched the masses here, connected them with the world, connecting them with the modern, modern life, raised their standard of living. Mm. And I think if I'm able to do this in the next few years, that will be great. Manoj Kohli. CEO of International Business and Joint Managing Director of Bharti Airtel. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for showing us how you're going to elevate the game. He says he's going to do it with humility and with a great consciousness for humanity. It's no longer about the digital divide but digital inclusivity for Africa, a handset for every African, internet access for every young African, turning a dark continent into a cosmopolitan dynamic and first world.